Ever since the launch of the current generation of consoles, there has been a lot of tech talk inside the console community. And also in this channel we discussed a lot of different technologies and how they work. But one thing that is untapped within the Arden A2 feature set are mesh shaders. Mesh shaders are fully supported by the Arden A2 architecture and DirectX 12 Ultimate suit on PC and Xbox Series consoles. Mesh shaders dramatically changed the geometry processing pipeline unlocking a new level of flexibility and performance. And in this video we are going to discuss in understandable words what are mesh shaders, how will they change the rendering pipeline and therefore graphics and performance and how will this impact graphics on Xbox Series X and S. Hello gamers from around the world, this is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with a tech focused video on mesh shaders. Just last week we have seen a very impressive tech demo running on the Xbox Series X from the coalition within the Unreal Engine 5. This impressive demo ran in real time on the current gen console and it was a great demonstration of some technologies within the Unreal Engine 5. But one thing we have not seen so far implemented in console games are mesh shaders and the reason for that is that implementing mesh shaders means a complete revamp of the current rendering pipeline in games. So it's really not just a push of a button to turn mesh shaders on or off, there's a lot more to this. And we know that due to a lot of factors like the pandemic, some technologies will need a few extra years in the oven, but once mesh shaders are here, they are going to revolutionize the way games are rendered. But before we discuss what mesh shaders are, you should definitely treat yourself and set your player to full 4K 60fps to get the best audio visual experience I can deliver to you. And while you're at it, it would be awesome of you to consider to also hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even turn on the notification bell to not miss out on future content. Okay, thank you guys, you rock big time and now let's have a look into what mesh shaders are. I want to start by putting out a disclaimer. The intention of this video is to explain mesh shaders in understandable worlds. That means that every once in a while I just make sacrifices of technical details in order to explain it plain and simple. So apologies for those who are missing a couple of deeper explanations on some things. Okay, but to understand what mesh shaders are, we need to first have a look in how the rendering pipeline works in today's graphics engines. And I want to reference here in this video a blog post from Dr. John Petty over on ACM SIGGRAPH, which I'll link in the description down below. The traditional rendering pipeline that we have today started more than 20 years ago. At the time, hardware worked a little bit different than today and in 1999, Nvidia was the first to offer a fully integrated T&L engine, a transform clipping and lighting engine that allowed allows to produce a two-dimensional view of a three-dimensional scene and only draws the parts of the scene that will be present in the picture after the rendering is completed. And it did all that by changing the color of the surfaces of the scene on the basis of lighting information. Yeah, that's a lot, but the important thing is that with this, the term of the GPU was introduced to the industry. Now, those processors were designed to work in sequence and that is what is referred to as the rendering pipeline completing one operation, passing on the results to the next one and to the next one and so on. So you really don't have to actually understand what the individual tasks in the respective rendering pipelines actually do. The important message here is that all the tasks are done subsequently. So going back to the origins of today's modern rendering pipeline. Back in the days, so-called vertex shaders were introduced. They worked really well, but limitations have come up over the years and so a lot of other shaders were introduced into the rendering pipeline. And by 2005, the list of functions of a GPU and the APIs was long. We had vertex shaders, geometry shaders, tessellation shaders, geometry shader stages, pixel shader stages and so on. Yeah, my head is spinning as well and you don't have to be an expert to see that this will eventually lead to complications because it gets really complicated and simply a lot of resources were wasted because of that complexity. So eventually graphics hardware evolved into a unified shader model. To quote Dr. Petty here, in 2005, ATI, now part of AMD, introduced a unified architecture on the hardware they developed for the Xbox 360 that supported DirectX 9.0C. And Media quickly followed with their Tesla GeForce 8 AIB series design in November 2006. Now, as part of Windows Vista, the first unified shader model in DirectX was introduced in 2006 as part of Direct3D. And with that, the industry moved on to an all-compute programming model for the GeForce. 
GPU. In 2017, AMD introduced a more programmable geometry pipeline stage in their Vega GPUs that ran a new type of shaders called a primitive shader that gives developers access to all the data they need to effectively process geometry which eventually led to the concept of mesh shaders. In 2019, Nvidia presented a paper on mesh and task shaders on a scientific level and in November 2019, Microsoft announced that DirectX 12 Ultimate would support mesh shaders and in March 2020, DirectX 12 Ultimate included them and the first code samples were released in January 21. So if we have a look at the traditional rendering pipeline, we can see that there is still a lot of subsequent shader processes included and the newly introduced pipeline with mesh shaders is significantly easier and allows within a single shader process also to incorporate parallel processing steps. And this is important because the hardware also works like that with parallel processors known as the shading engines. But even if you really don't know what a geometry shader or vertex shader does, I think it is obvious to everyone that this new rendering pipeline looks a lot easier to handle. Now, over the last couple of months, a lot of different technologies like variable rate shading or sampler feedback streaming have been discussed in the community. Mesh shaders get mentioned from time to time, but I do have the feeling that people really try to avoid discussing them because they are really hard to explain. So I'll give it a shot. Some of you might know that one of the key factors in providing a super detailed object in a video game is that you cover the surface of your objects with a lot of triangles. The amount of triangles on your surface or mesh basically defines how rich your details on the surface are. That's why in the latest Unreal Engine 5 demo for instance, Epic highlighted that they can put 1 to 2 million triangles on each individual object in a certain scene. And also when you listen to the talk of the coalition about their latest tech demo running on the Xbox Series X, they are very proud of the amount of triangles they can put on their objects. Now in the rendering pipeline with mesh shaders, the developers can basically bring the data of their choice to the mesh shaders. Now mesh shaders can basically output triangles in the rendering pipeline by themselves. They output a small index triangle list that goes to the rasterizer, which basically is responsible for putting the image on screen. So obviously this is going to be a game changer because it simplifies the way how the image is put on the screen and therefore freeing up a lot of resources and making the rendering process way more efficient. Okay, we still have not seen mesh shaders in action on Xbox consoles and its AMD hardware, but Nvidia has demonstrated a super impressive demo that ran at 4K 60fps on an RTX 3060 Ti graphic card. Now this is not a super duper high end GPU, this GPU is in the ballpark of the Xbox Series X, plus minus a few percent of course. Okay, and with that computational power, Nvidia has demonstrated a demo of mesh shaders that ran at 4K 60fps and rendered the scene you can see here with 1.8 billion triangles, which is an insanely high number. You can see an incredible amount of detail on each and every object in that scene and again it does not run on a super duper high end PC. This is truly impressive and has made big waves in the tech scene. It has also shown that AMD seems a little bit behind with their toolset when compared to Nvidia. But hey, during these troubled times with the pandemic, basically everything is a little bit delayed and those awesome technologies will come to AMD graphics cards and Xbox Series consoles really soon. Whether mesh shaders are fully supported on the PlayStation 5 remains to be seen. Sony has been really quiet about this and we do know that they do not support the DirectX 12 Ultimate suit. But given that we have seen some impressive amount of triangles in the Unreal Engine 5 demos running on PS5, I would expect the hardware to at least support it to some degree. Be that as it may, I do hope that you got an idea on what mesh shaders are. The introduction of this concept changes the rendering pipeline dramatically by simplifying the way how triangles and with that graphical fidelity is put on screen. It allows developers to prioritize and free up resources and rasterize different objects with different amount of triangles. But you have also hopefully seen that this requires a complete change in how the rendering pipeline is built up and that is why this is a technology that is hard to implement into existing engines. And that's why I expect mesh shaders to be used more prominently in the current gen only games that are coming down the line. Games that are truly made with the current state of the art hardware in mind. And this is now just my speculation. With Starfield coming down the line, Bethesda said that they have basically changed the entire rendering pipeline to bring the new Creation Engine 2.0 to modern day standards. I could see that that game is one of the first games to actually fully make use of mesh shaders. Nevertheless, some of the Unreal Engine 5 games that we expect in the next couple of years will definitely make use of this and I can't wait to see where graphical fidelity will go from here. But for now, I do hope you found this video interesting and informative and if you did so, I would truly appreciate you showing your support by hitting the like and 
subscribe button and maybe even hit the little notification bell to not miss out on future content. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can now become a channel member and get early access to my videos and custom made badges and emojis. And let me thank everyone who supports this channel in any kind of way. You guys are awesome and make this channel to what it is. And I also want to say a big thank you to Carl from Season Gaming for bringing the blog post I used as an inspiration for this video to my attention. And now let me know in the comments down below, did you find this topic interesting? And when do you think we will see games making use of mesh shaders? And besides here on YouTube, you can also hit me up on Twitter where I share a lot of opinions and gaming discussions. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I see you the next time and game on.